All right, so today we're gonna to talk about this knife here. This is the SE Expat Medellin. And it was presented to me by a dude that's way better than you. And you, maybe not you. Let's get into this. All right, first I wanna thank smkw.com, Smoky Mountain Knife Works for Send this to me. Check that out. Have a look see. All right, so I was at Smoky Mountain Knife Works this last week, and oh, that was their their rep day. I just can happened to be there on an awesome day, and the marketing director for Essie was there, and I was able to chat with him for a little bit. This dude. This dude's one of the guys that you want to grow up to be like. We have one of those kind of guys in our group, kind of. So, but just, you know, super awesome. Just the way he was talking, it just made me want to, it made me want to be more manly. So he was telling me about SE knives and he was telling me about their development process and how all their knives they test out in the field before they ever bring them into production. And just the things that they go through and the things that they do. And they run all these amazing... Well, here, he sent me this. Or he gave me this little fly. This School Survival Randall's Training and Adventure School Survival. There's the little logo there. So he's part of all this. He's the marketing director. And he told me, he said, I'm the marketing director, but I don't have an office. He said, my office is outside. And I forget how many days he told me he was basically spent outdoors every year. It was like one third of the year at least. He's out in the wilderness doing stuff with the knives. So he immediately had my undivided attention. He was just one of those guys that you want to listen to talk, listen to him talk for just for whatever he had to say. And so he just got me excited about SE knives. Just full disclosure, I don't have they're not sending me anything, they're not giving me anything. I don't well, okay. Well, he did give me some stickers. That was it. He gave me some stickers. I'm gonna chunk those in piff. Or I might send, I might want to put on one of these on my board here. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to put them somewhere. But, so I'm not getting anything from these guys. I just, I'm just super excited about the way they create knives and the way they make knives. And so he showed me this knife. This is their newest folder. This is the, check that out, the Medellin. And it is named after that certain town where all the drugs came from. But I'll, I don't think that's why they named it that because of the drugs but because of the town i don't know what it is but he said they have some kind of south american connection in the group there check that out all right so we we're talking about talking about this knife and, and then the other knife what is it the azula and the avispa we've we've checked those out before on the channel here so check that out now this check that out this blade is the same shape as the SE3. If you have an SE3 and you put that right there, and I think you actually have a little more cutting edge because of the choil, there's no choil here. So this is like a folding SE3 is what he told me. Check that out. Have a look, see this is a first production. Don't be jealous, I'm sure there's more out there for thousands of dollars. Check that out, not thousands of dollars. All right, so let's get into this, just to see what we got here as far as what we're gonna be looking at. And all right, we got one, two, three, about three and a half inches of Aus 8. Now, I know a lot of you steel snobs are like, Aus 8, I can get better than Aus 8. I wish it was M390. The guy, the guy said, Look, we use this out in the field. We use the Aus 8. We use, what is it they use? 10, 1075 or whatever it is they use on their fixed blades. He said, This is stuff we can use and resharpen out in the field without any problem. And so I don't know. He's got me all excited about that. Just make it. He's taking me from steel, steel snobbery and bring me down to realistic expectations and what I'm going to use it for and all the kinds of good stuff. It was awesome talking to this guy. So you got three and a half inches of Osse, dual thumb studs, running on washers there. It's not super snappy. I put a little bit of lube on here just to so I could open it. Now, if you want to test your thumbs and you want to get your thumbs tight. This one might be the one to help you do that. Do this for about three days, and you'll have enough calluses to open whatever knife you want. So it's not a fidgety, drop-shut kind of knife. This thing just feels really good 
and I really want to take it outside and use it and just to see what we can do. So I'm going to do that a little bit and just see maybe a little bit how this OS8 holds up. Oh, that's it. Well, let's get into this real quick and then we'll just go over this. So you got a satin, uh, satin blade <laughs> and then you got the stainless steel finish here, the stainless steel scale on this side, deep pocket carry. So there you go. And it is up tip up or tip down. Now it isn't left, right. So you have to get used to that. All you left-handed whiny babies. <laughs> Not that you're whiny, just the whiny babies that are left handed. Not that all people that are left handed are whiny babies. I'm left handed. I'm not a whiny baby much. All right, so let's keep going with that. So we got one, two, three, four, two, 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 about 4.8 inches of this G10 scale on this side. Really nice. Not too grippy or rippy. It won't tear your hand up, but this thing doesn't want to leave your hand. It doesn't want to move at this point. It just feels good. This feels like something you can just do what you want to with. And that that was really cool that he pointed out. He brought out the SE3 and showed me how the blades just lined up perfectly on that. So if you like the SE3 and you're like, I wish I had an SE3 folder. There you go. SE3 folder right there. Just for you. <clears throat> so, the, oh man, the ones, I'm going to keep nailing this one home, by the way. Their warranty is insane. It's, it's They have this, and I should have brought the picture with me. This picture, this not picture, but a big old thing on the wall at Smoky Mountain of the knives that they've warrantied that were just messed up. It looked like somebody, you couldn't mess up a knife any worse if you're trying to mess up a knife. Some of them were went through fire, some of them were broken in half, and they warrantied them all. I talked to him, he said, look, we don't want you to abuse your knife. We don't want you to, you know, use it as a pry bar or a hammer or whatever you're using it for. But if you do, we're going to cover it. I I, I kind of want to mess this knife up just to test them, but I believe him because I saw the disc. And I don't want to have to get another one of these. But this knife is awesome, by the way. I don't know what it would, what it would take to break it, but it's super solid. This thing is just, uh, just locked, up, locked up in this. Nice Nice lock up here. Check that out. Let's see if I can get that to focus a little bit. No, I cannot. It's okay. It's going to eventually. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So it's locked up nicely. The warranty is insane. The steel is good. We're going to check out the steel here in a second and just see how sharp it'll stay. The people are cool. You know, you, you buy some knives and it you have no idea what the guys are into or that they're into knives or anything like that. These guys are like super dudes. These are, I was talking to him and he was basically, yeah, I, you know, I zip line through a jungle fighting out gorillas. I had to do some underwater rescuing and I climbed the side of a mountain and lit a signal fire for the paratroopers. He's that kind of guy. I'm not saying that's what he did, but that's the kind of guy he is. And it's just kind of cool that they're developing knives to help themselves out in the field. The story of the SE is, is a really cool story, and I'm not sure how it's intertwined with other knife companies, but I know it is. You'll have to check that out for yourself. But this is the, the Medellin, and I really like it. In fact, it's barely left my pocket since last week, and I have all kinds of cool knives that carry in my pocket. And I love this knife. I love the way this feels in hand, and... <clears throat> If y'all are worried about the Aus 8 steel, don't. He's not worried about it. He's y'all see the knife he's carrying. He's he's the one knife he had was like that long. Oh, here's a cool story too. I was talking to him, and I know his name is Shane, and I forget his last name. I don't know if I should name drop. But yeah, I was, I was with Shane and uh, Bob, and I have his card here. Oh, here it is. Should I name it? Okay, Shane Adams. He's the marketing director. He's awesome. Just and you know what? He could have been a total doofus too and treated him like an idiot because I don't know a whole lot of stuff about that, but he didn't. He treated me like you know, he just wanted to teach me something. He had this really, it made me want to lose weight and go live in a survival tent with not with him, but you know, maybe my tent's here and his tent's here. And we wake up, do our morning cup of joe, and then go, you know, make some, make some shelters out of you know, brush and, and alligator skins or something cool like that. Just a really cool guy. And the kind of guy that you'd want to learn from. But he was really cool. Anyways, where's my brain? So, 
this has been in my pocket since ever since pretty much ever since I got it I just man I just love this knife it's got a nice slender profile there can you see that pretty good no I'm trying to get it focused for you see if I can focus it this way all right there, there we go all right so what I'm gonna do I'm maybe I'll get a board chop on this thing for a little bit and see what I can get to, to happen to this blade first I'm gonna test the test the edge here do I have any coupons left I don't know if I have any coupons left I might have to use a normal piece of paper not as good as a coupon but still good for testing all right so let's check this out yeah that's really sharp let's see how it does on belly hair here. Don't laugh, don't make me laugh. Don't tell me any excellent jokes. Oh yeah, what do you do with a rusty razor? I just did it. Yeah, there you go. So this thing will shave belly hair right now. So I'm gonna do, is we're gonna do a little testing on it and see how that Aussade holds up. I'm telling you guys, lose the steel snobbery and enter into the world of really cool knives. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be the judge for that. You be the judge for that. Let me go get something real quick. Alright, so I went outside, got me one of my two by fours. And I'm just gonna sit here and carve upon it while I sing a happy tune. Or not. But let's just see what we can do with this to just kind of mess up that edge a little bit and see what we can do to resharpen it. I mean, that's what he was talking about. That's what he was talking about, the usefulness of the steels they, they make. He's, you know, he was talking about how certainly <clears throat> the super steels will last longer, but when you're out in the field and all of a sudden your super steel does get dull, what in the world are you gonna do is sharpen it? And he said he can just, all the steels they have, he can just take it and go ahead and, and resharpen it however he wants to. Urgh. I don't want to do this. Don't do that. That's a good way to cut your own throat. Uh, uh, uh. This blade is really cool. All right, so we're getting into this two by four here. So anyways, back to the guy. He was really cool. It made me want to go do some classes with him, stuff like that. I don't know if I can ever get svelte enough. I might get into that. I always like hanging out outside when I was younger, when I was a young man. Ugh, just kind of got used to the air conditioning. But I really liked it. Ugh. Tell you what, this will take it out of your triceps. You want a good workout, carve into some wood. Ugh. This is some useful jimping now that I'm actually using it. This is useful, useful jimping right there. All right, so we're just sitting here doing this. Yeah, I might fast forward. This is so y'all don't. All right, so we're still using this Aus Eight. It's still Aus Eight. Let's Aus Eight it from the other side. Give those triceps a break. You can see how more malicious my right hand is. Very strong. Uh, you notice how deep I'm getting on those cuts. Uh, all right, so you're just getting some good cuts into this really hard. Dude, this is a hard 2x4. This is what I'm going to use it for chopping. And it really prepared me for the chopping 2x4s that they use at that competition. So this is not a weak 2x4 or anything like that. All right. All right. Got some good good carving in there. Ugh. So this is all state. Remember that. All right. So we did a bunch. That's quite a bit. I don't know how much you're going to do out in the field with that. Let's get our piece of paper. That I already threw away. Why don't I throw the paper away? We didn't even use it that much. It's okay. There's more trees in the forest. Just go through that paper. All right, let's see what we got here. Still there. Still there. Look at that. So we whacked onto that. Let's check out the belly here. Oh. Yeah. I'd show it to you, but that's kind of weird. Yeah. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't show Shane this. I want him to think I'm cool. All right, so 
the lock still locked up. Let's see if we can thwack that open. Got nothing there, no blade play. Lock up is still locked up. Let's see if we can show that to you properly. And so, just a really good knife. Just a, it, I don't know. Just, you know, and you're not gonna be using it a lot for this kind of stuff. I mean, if you're out, oh, that is one cool thing he did. That's, that really goes to this point. So he said, I, I was trying to not be cool, but I just wanted his advice, just so I could say I bought a knife on his advice, which is kind of what I bought this one with. Let's get this zoomed in on, zoomed in. Is that better? All right, zoom. All right, and so I was talking to him, and I said, hey, look, out of all these knives, and I was really looking for some advice. If you had to go out in the, the jungle, out in the woods, which one of these knives are you taking with you? And he wasn't like, this one here, this is the one, because I would have bought it. And a lot, of, a lot of knife reps would have been like, this is the one you want. This is the monster truck Ferrari of our knife collection. And if I, he didn't say that. He said, look, it depends on what, what else I'm carrying. And he just kind of explained it that way. He said, look, if I'm gonna carry, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna take a saw, I'm gonna take an ax. So he didn't have, he wasn't trying to sell me a knife. He was just trying to like sell me an attitude or sell me like get this across that there were different things for different jobs. It was really cool. It was awesome talking to him. Just some of the most fun I had at that Smoky Mountain all week. All right, so I'm done. This thing, I doubt you're gonna really, really test your OS 8. You're gonna miss out on a really cool knife if OS 8 is throwing you off because this is a great knife. This is a great knife, and you're gonna, let's see if I can get this, focus, dirty knot focuser, oh there we go. So this is a great knife, don't miss out on a cool knife because you're a knife snob, or a steel snob, I'm a knife snob. I'm trying to get out of steel snobbery, this is really a step in that direction, because just talking to that guy was awesome. <clears throat> Now there are things that you know, you're going to need different steels for, I understand that, but not for this. Not for your EDC and the way he was talking about, not for your, your woodsy knives and stuff like that. Stuff that you're going to want to resharpen while you're out there taking down shrubberies. Alright, do me a favor, go check out smkw.com. Use my link down there to them. That really helps out the channel. Not because I'm using the knife, the money for the channel or anything. I got secrets for the money, but... We'll talk about that later. Do me a favor. So, like here, subscribe over here, come back here, hit the bell, and check out the rest of my videos here. Thank you again, SMKW. I'll talk to you later.